Hey everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join in with Uncommon Women Podcast, a dope podcast to bring light to reality from real life people sharing real life stories with a host of women having real life talk, the good and the bad with no judgment. Uncommon Women's Loyalty is here to support those that need a safe space to speak their truth and rawness to the world. Tune in, relax, take notes, and let's vibe. Here are your hosts, Uncommon Women. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Uncommon Women. I'm Shanira. And I am Jenny Lee. And today I am super excited about today's guest speaker. Um, she's a woman of many traits. Uh, she's a Kim Coffin, and she's a certified trauma-informed uh, somatic empowerment sexuality coach. She's a best author, a teacher. Um, she's graduated from Layla Martin Institute um, for Sexuality and a founder of Get Your Sexy Back. So I'm super excited for her to be on our platform today. Um, she's overcome so many obstacles in her life um, from trauma and then, you know, just being overwhelmed and burnt out as as women, we can go through that. Yes. <laughs> so today she's going to share um, how she's overcome some of her obstacles and how she's able to help others. So thank you so much for Kim um, for coming on today to be a part of our podcast. We truly appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm truly honored to be here. No, it's so definitely an honor. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So before we get into, you know, the good stuff of getting our sexy back and, you know, talking about everything that people normally don't talk about on talk shows. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, your life and how it was growing up? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to go a little bit into what I do now and then show you the backwards because it's like night and day and it makes more <laughs> okay. sense. Um, I spent, you gave me a great bio there. I loved it, but I, I can't kind of, you know, some people are like, what does that mean? What exactly does that mean? So it means that I specialize in sexuality. I specialize in sexuality, empowerment, Tantra and relationships. And I teach my people how to have the tools to unleash their sexual confidence and uh, unlock on un like profound new levels of self-love, pleasure, empowerment, intimacy with themselves, mm -hmm. but also in their relationships. And mm -hmm. I share all that because, you know, I'm teaching people how to reconnect to their body, how to activate their turn on, how to heal heartbreak and shame and reclaim their natural sexy selves so that they can step into their unapologetic, like unshakable power. And the reason I say that first is I wasn't always this way. <laughs> this was not me. Um, right. So, and it's all connected, like all of these pieces that I'm going to share and all of the pieces that I just shared, they're all connected together. So you want me to go all the way back? I'm going to throw oh. it back just a little bit. <laughs> go all the way back. No, yeah, it's a quick, it's a quick back. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, if you're not feeling really regulated right now, I'm going to invite you to come back to this later because it isn't a, a lovely beginning. It's it's pretty rough, right? I woke up in the middle of the night at 14 being sexually assaulted by my stepfather, and that was absolutely wow. gut-wrenching, heart -wrenching. Like I was young, right? I didn't know what to do. And then I got hit with a second betrayal where I told my mother the next day, and she believed me initially, but then within two hours, she did not. Wow. And that was like a, a like a gut kick, right? Like it was just like boom. And, and what that did is is it it left me really. I remember actually that day, that then and there, going, I'm on my own here. Like I literally am on my own here. And like walls went up around heart, and it was like back off. Like I like I'm gonna have to protect myself going forward, right. kind of thing. And and this left me you know, very, very disconnected into my 20s, into my 30s, um, even in my teenage years. I didn't know, I didn't trust myself. I doubted myself. I ended up being very, very um, people pleasing and very go, 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 like work, 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 overworking, mm -hmm. people pleasing. It ended up moving into burnout and a lot of frustration and a lot of adrenal fatigue and a whole pile of messy shit that is never fun. Um, and, you know, all of this to say that it is what has made me, you know, come to the point of where I am today. And to be honest, I don't regret any of it. It's, you know, what has allowed me to come to this place that later in my 40s, I was able to go, okay, 
something's got to change here. So I let it go for a long time, a wow. long time. Yeah. And I kept thinking I dealt with it. I kept thinking, oh, we've already dealt with that. I'm fine. I'm fine. And uh, realistically, my body, which all of our bodies do, was never had never forgotten. It's never going to forget. The body keeps the score. And that's it. Like, that's it. So eventually, you know, it showed up in lower back pain, depression, thyroid issues, yeah. adrenal yeah. issues, so mm. much stuff, so much. So I'm going to let you ask as many questions as you want. We'll continue from there. Wow. So how was your relationship with your mother? When, how did that transition? You know, after you explained to her what happened, she believed you and then she didn't. Like, what was the relationship with your stepfather? Did he like, how yeah. did that go? <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't go. It didn't go well. And yet I was caught being a dependent upon them. Right. Yeah. So um, for many years, my dog is being a little brat right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, can you hear him or no? Yeah, I think yeah. Like, he's yeah. feeling it too. He's, he's listening to us, girl. He's like, oh. okay. The, the, the cat's coming soon, Jenny. I know, I know it is. Um, so it left me people pleasing with my mother. It left me being afraid of my mother. It wow. left me even at 40 going, okay, whatever you say. Like, even though everything in my body was screaming no to whatever she was asking me to do. Um, so it, it, it definitely. I was afraid of her. I was totally afraid to speak up and, mm -hmm. and caught in those cycles. Um, yeah, it's crazy how trauma can show up at one point and can totally change us from, you know, not trusting ourselves, moves us into doubting ourselves, moves us into mm -hmm. total nervous system dysregulation, right? right. It, can, it can show up in so yeah. many different ways. From that experience, did you did you have any issues with, you know, as you got older, you know, we talking about from 14 to, to being in your 40s or even your 30s, did you have issues or relationship issues with trusting men? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Wow. Uh, I'm doing a lot of reflecting on that these days. And uh, wow. yes, right. So, uh, uh, yeah, I chose a relationship that felt safe for me at the time. Oh, I chose no. something that really wasn't truly Mm -hmm. what was meant to be, but because it felt safe, right? Mm -hmm. There was, and comfortable. The, there and was all these things there, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he was avoidant. And that was like, okay, that's what I need right now, right? And mm -hmm. hey, I don't even regret that. I have three beautiful teenage Aww. adults, right? They're 23, 20, and almost 18. And, you know, that's what was meant to be too. And I see that journey as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. just okay. a big growth curve. <laughs> And I can share a little bit, you know, I know people are going to want to know, you might not want to know, maybe you have other questions first, but I can go into how I reclaimed, if you'd like. And, yeah, and absolutely. What that yeah. Like. I'm sure someone's probably going through it or may have went through it and they're just like, well, how'd she get from where she's at now to from yeah. the mm -hmm. trauma in the past, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it literally, I started to get the whispers 10 years ago, the slow down, you need to slow down 2013. Mm -hmm. And I didn't quite listen. So the universe presented me with a broken ankle. <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. Slow you down. You don't want to <laughs> no, listen? Slow you down. Uh -huh. you it made you sit out. It made you sit out now. <laughs> All right. Right leg. Driving leg. Three months. Couldn't wow. Walk. Couldn't oh, yeah. Universe was like, okay, here. We got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I'm like, okay. Um, and I started to reclaim some of my boundaries with my mother then. I started to speak up a little bit, mm. but like she really pushed back and, and it was very Good. wobbly then still. Uh, it was wobbly for a while there. And then it was in 2017 where literally everything came to a head. I was really unhappy. I was really stuck in my head. I wasn't enjoying my life. I was feeling guilty for what I already, I was feeling guilty for feeling bad because I had so much, mm. right? I was really, really, frustrated and angry and the, just just chaos you just picture chaos living yeah. in me right right and um a friend actually that summer told me that i needed to confront my mother again i was like are you nuts you know my mother <laughs> like she's scary right, now, I think so. uh, right? Yeah. right and then i'd actually signed up to be in a program uh to work with mama gina in new york at the school of womanly arts but i hadn't started yet and then the me too movement happened and then I read 
everything I could find, like every people's story for three days straight. I was in awe, but I was like, but you don't know my mom. And <laughs> I was really petrified at 40 still of my mother. And uh, then a couple of days later, I was driving to Ottawa. I'm in, in Canada and uh, I pulled over for gas and I was like, screw it. I quickly posted a little wee me too. And then I got in the car and started driving and didn't look at my phone for another four hours until I got to Ottawa. And um, it changed my life. People reached out, family members reached out. It um, allowed me then to go in to actually start processing my trauma. And then I also got held in the sisterhood with School of Womanly Arts. And I started this deep reclamation journey of reconnecting to my body, of healing the heartbreak and shame and activating my turn on and, and all of these things that I teach people how to do today. And then it just kind of has continued down the road through a ton of amazing world-renowned mentors and leaders. It's been amazing. Mm, I'm going to have to yell at him. <laughs> so at the point when you wanted to confront your mom, how did that look like for you when you were in that place where you finally was like, I'm going to confront this matter. And I think sometimes we don't want to confront our mothers because that's your mom and you love her, but you don't want to hurt her, but you're afraid of her. Yeah. Uh, let's just say I shook a lot. Like, I mean, outright dysregulated. Even when I left the conversation, my sister came with me, which I was super grateful for. Um, as I left the conversation, like I wasn't even walking straight. Like I bumped into a wall and then I bumped into a railing. Like I, I totally got pushed back into that 14 year old girl in dissociation, mm. like really quick. So I knew what I was going to say. I'd already, you know, worked with a therapist as well. I was ready to say it. And I just said it and got out, Like, mm. you know, it, it was tricky. And I left it with her at that moment. It was November 2nd. <laughs> I won't forget the day. The day too, yeah. Actually. Cause she, she was away on a cruise. So it took me two weeks till she came back to talk to her, mm. um, which was perfect timing again. And I remember saying when I left, I was like, you know what, you just digest this and call me when you want to chat next week or two weeks or whatever. I haven't heard from her since, <laughs> which I'm laughing because I see that that is meant to be. There's a lot of toxicity. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. but you yeah. freed yourself in the long run. Yeah, you know? exactly. Oh, I mean, it, it, it sucks. Hurt. It sucks, yeah. but it yeah. was sucking you too. It was draining you. Yeah, so, it was mm -hmm. sucking me dry. Through, yeah, yeah through, that's since working on it, and she'll come around when she she's accountable for yeah. for everything mm -hmm. that, that if that happens, you know, it's yeah. it's hard. It's a hard pill to pill to swallow, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's part of the work. Like I'm sovereign and I can do my own work and I can do my own inner mothering work and I can hold myself. And that is so, so important. And she's mm -hmm. sovereign. She's on her own journey. Uh, like we're, yeah. we don't need right. to be together. It is her journey yep. is my journey and it is what it is. And in the meantime, I have learned how to hold myself, how to remother myself, how to cultivate that deep, deep, epic trust within my body yeah. and safety that I can hold myself through no matter what happens, no matter what happens. That is yeah. so good. Did have you ever, did you ever get to the point with the situation with your stepfather? Did you ever confront him or was the whole situation ever confronted at all? No, I didn't need to. My brother and sister did. And yeah. I was like, have fun. Like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> but you see, yeah. I mean, you have your brother and sister and they were your keepers. Your support, right. That's yeah. amazing. And That's they so still, you know, they still wobble a little bit. I'm sure they still don't know what to believe. They just don't know. And that again, it's their journey and that's okay. And I had to heal, heal a lot of the inner masculine, right? The sacred masculine then within me as well. And, and learn how to cultivate that safety in both the feminine and the masculine, because mm. it's all linked and we all have both within our own bodies. Oh, let's so, get into that. That's really oh, good. Yeah. We, we do. We do. <laughs> this is, you know, they talk a lot about, you know, women are too masculine these days. And, you know, some of the stuff may be from mm -hmm. us guarding ourselves and yep. some of that we've been through in the past or just seeing things, you know, being a childhood and, you know, dysfunctional families or whatever the case may be. How do you transition that? You know, mm -hmm. some people's like, well, you can't turn it off. That's the, that's who they are. But I believe that, you know, femi femininity is something that can come out if it's brought in a safe space. So yep. that's a yeah. Bit of yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So, you know, we had the patriarchal culture over here. I'm, I'm using my opposite hand here, which I think I'm looking backwards. But either way, on my left side, we had the patriarchal, patriarchal culture for years. Right. And the feminine was really like put down 
just be quiet. Like it was really dismissed, really uh -huh. discouraged. And, and then we hit the feminist movement and we shifted all the way over here, right? And we're like really far apart now. And this is the part I think you're talking about, about being controlling, being in our masculine, go, 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 go. We can do it. We don't need a man, all of this schmuck. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And I disagree with that. It's not true. It's actually time that we come back in, in, in the middle and allow ourselves to be in our feminine as women, if we're female identifying women, to surrender into femininity, to turn on, to live a life of pleasure, to activate what is our innate inner knowing that lives in our own pelvic bowl. That is our power source of a woman and to live there and also then to surrender also into the masculine when there's a safe masculine space that can also hold such hmm. yeah like yeah but we can't do it when we're stuck in our heads overworking people pleasing go 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 right. trying to keep up with the joneses caring about what other people think yep. can't do it there we have to get into our body hmm. so can you give us some tips in regards to you know your past experiences and how you were able to help women overcome those life obstacles to get into you know, getting yeah. our sexy back and bringing yeah. out the inside and, you know, just, just being confident in ourselves overall. Yeah. Yeah. So I've kind of broken it down into like three main pillars of my, my get your sexy back approach kind of thing. Sexy back approach. <laughs> um, it's reclaim. Yeah. It's reclaim, reconnect and remember. And this was my own journey. And this is what I teach so many people. So reclaiming is about reclaiming the places we've been disempowered reclaiming our voice, reclaiming our boundaries, reclaiming our truth, our body love, our pleasure, feeling sexy, feeling turned on and alive in our bodies. So we're reclaiming all the parts of us that we have dismissed from being shamed, from being shut down, told that to, you're too much, you're too big, turn like quiet over there, quiet, right? And we have to learn how to cultivate that safety and trust in our own body to actually start being who we are. So that's number one, reclaim. We're reclaiming our truth. Uh, we're liberating yeah. our truth and we're restoring who we are. And I love to look at it like if you look at a toddler, they are running around outside through the sprinkler naked, twirling, dancing, singing. They don't give a damn. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> They're they not know. going to they bed. Zero. Yeah, they ain't about nobody but themselves. You know. They're not going to bed and they're not eating those feet. Right. And we have to come back to reclaim who, who that is as women, mm. as female identifying humans, the her. We have to find her again because she's in there. She's never gone away. She's in there. She's just been piled up with all of this muck of societal conditioning and what it means to show up as a woman in this world, being a good wife, a good mom, a good, you know, daughter. All well, that's asking things. a lot, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then the next phase is reconnect. And that is where we really have to learn how to come home in our body to our sacred feminine, to our sexuality, to our sensuality, and to the innate inner power that lives in our pelvic bowl, our GPS, literally. Um, and if we want to step fully into our power without limiting beliefs holding us back, we have to reconnect to our body. And I found that sexuality is the key. It is the biggest place that we have been disempowered as women, and it's the quickest portal to be coming back into our power. Reclaim that and reclaim everything else. Mm. Yeah. And this is how we get to cultivate that deep trust. And this is how we get to tap into the innate inner wisdom that does live in our pelvic bowl, in our womb space, in also what I normally refer to as pussy, which is the epic, um, the essence of who we are, right? It's not always necessarily anatomical, but it's like that power source, it's that GPS. Mm. So we get to re reconnect. And some of the tools, I, I missed some of the tools for, um, for reclaiming, but it's re learning how to reclaim the boundaries, the voice, your truth, seeing what you believe, seeing what your desires are. And the tools to reconnect are learning sacred sexuality, playing with Tantra, learning how to be at home in your body and be really, really super comfortable in your body and release and rewrite the, release the shame and rewrite the sexual stories that you may be holding on to. Yeah, and then the last one is remember. So what happens when we do the reclaim and the reconnect is we get to this place and remembrance is really hard to understand. But once you feel it, you're like, ah, that it's this deep, deep remembrance of who we are. It's that little girl again going, ha, 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 I get to play again. I'm right. here. I'm in an adult body now and I know exactly what I want and nobody's going to stop me. And this is unshakable confidence that you've got this no matter what happens in the world. 
And you know, deep in your bones, like deep in your body, the infinite power that you have. I like that. Mm. Me too. That is, that is deep. <laughs> it is deep. And I'm, and I'm sitting here trying to visualize because, you know, it's easier said than done. Obviously, yeah. the first step is to, you know, reclaim. But how do you get to that place when you don't have self-love? you know, within yourself and you don't feel confident and in your bodies and you have trigger moments from your past trauma. How, how can a woman get to that moment in her life? Honestly, I wouldn't have gotten to it alone without, without sisterhood. I would not have gotten there on my own, right? Like I remember having body outright hatred for many parts of my body. And I, and I remember thinking people saying other people who've been in the program before me going, Oh, you know, you'll get there and you'll learn how to love all your body. And I was like, yeah, I don't think so. Right. Like, we have to do it in sisterhood and, you know, look at my wounding as well. It's created from sisterhood, technically my mother, but still sisterhood, yeah. right? So we have to get in, in community. We have to start unpacking what's there. What, you know, we have to be called in on certain things. You say something and somebody's like, ooh, did you hear yourself there? You're like, you shoulded yourself. Yeah. Uh, you're doubting yourself. Can we bring in some approval? Can we bring in compassion? Right. What are you doing for your pleasure? I also volunteer at the local sexual assault center and I teach a, a program with them. And, you know, we're just playing with pleasure right now this week. And they're like, yeah, but I have to work hard before I get it. And I hear this all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I don't really deserve it yet. And what are people yeah. going to think? This is all limiting beliefs and conditioning. So we actually have to start digging in and seeing what it is we do believe to see what we can unpack and, and yeah. literally follow the crumbs. I love mm -hmm. that. You got to declutter all that stuff out of your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you, in order for it to, you know, create a solid foundation, you have to be surrounded by the right people and yep. be supportive and yeah. things like that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the piece of sacred sexuality. So I use the words sacred pleasure, sacred sexuality, and tantra interchangeably. And it's, it's a practice, right? It's like yoga. It's something you have to practice. And when you learn how to practice sacred sexuality and, and so forth that way, you cultivate that you get to tap in, even if it's a little micro doses in the beginning of your innate inner knowing. It might just be during a practice. You're like, oh, I just got a download. Can I trust it? Mm -hmm. And we have to start like following again those breadcrumbs too. Mm. Nice. Yeah. So trying to find your sexuality and through the trauma, um, because obviously like for myself or any other woman that has been through trauma with sexual abuse, um, how is there a process to go through that initially, especially, you know, when you've been sexually abused as a child where, you know, you might have multiple partners or you don't want anyone touching you. How does the process to get through that in order for you to be like, I want to be comfortable in my own body mm -hmm. and, you know, and love myself to that point where I'm not traumatized by the abuse that occurred when I was a child? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really good question. <clears throat> and the answer there is we have to go as slow as the slowest part within you needs to go. Mm -hmm. We have to go slow. And I have to let him out two seconds. <laughs> <I'm gonna> <laughs> Okay. Oh. It's like mama, what you doing? Like <laughs> Finally, he just wants in, but tonight he's like, let me out. Like, I'm trying to be the guest speaker too. <laughs> Bugger. Oh, right. Yeah. So we have to go the slowest of the slowest parts of you want to go because if not, we're going to re-traumatize you. And we have to cult cultivate that safety. And it might be little wee pieces. Like it depends what safety means to you. And okay. it depends how you need to find safety. Because not only that, every single woman in this world holds sexual trauma. Just from being alive in this culture, unfortunately, we hold sexual trauma. We get it from a bad pap smear. We get it right when it hurts. We get it from them flying the door open while somebody's doing an exam when we're in labor. We get it from having sex when, and you know, there's a hair in the way and we're desperately in pain, but we're like, hurry up and finish. And we just let them push through kind of thing. We we're holding trauma in so many different ways and not to negate any abuse or sexual assault. That's also huge, huge trauma, but we are all holding a whole pile of sexual trauma. 
a whole mm. pile. So we have to, you know, see what's there and everybody's different. And that's why it's really tricky to kind of figure out exactly the right steps. It's important you work with somebody who is trauma informed, who works somatically with the body because our head, you know, I had somebody reaching out that I was talking to last week too. She's like, I've done so much work around my sexual trauma in my head, but my body just won't forget. And that's the point. Mm. Your body is always going to remember. So we need to start working with the body to hold those pieces. Yeah. Mm. And great. Heal. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. All right. We're going to take a quick uh, commercial break and then we're going to come back and talk about the good stuff about how to get your sexy back. Have you recently started a business? Maybe looking to get more exposure? Are you interested in taking your business to the next level? Let Uncommon Women podcasts further assist you with our business and brand promoting packages. For more information, please email us at uncommonwomenpodcast.com or reach us directly on one of our social media platforms so we can further assist you. And always remember, stay uncommon. Thank you so much for that. So if you're just joining us, we are interviewing Kim Coffin. Uh, she's a trauma coach and sexuality coach. Coach. She's speaking on, you know, how she's overcame some of her obstacles of being um, sexual assaulted at a young age and how she's actually able to help other women and be empowered and learn to build that self-confidence back into their lives. So my question is, how did you get into this? How did you just wake mm. up one day and was like, you know what? <laughs> I want to be a coach on sexuality. Like, how, how did no. this all come about? <laughs> yeah, if you told me like 10 years ago I was going to be a sexuality coach, I would have laughed at you. I would have laughed. <laughs> um, and it came about first my own journey, right? So, so starting working with world renowned leaders and doing my own work first, mm. I had the first download. Mm -hmm. Um, saying you're going to do this. And I was like, oh, are you mad? Like, I was like, <laughs> mm -mm, that's not happening. And she's like, yes, you are. And I was like, shut up. Right, like, in the beginning, I was like, shut up. Um, so it was my own journey. It was working with these amazing, amazing world renowned leaders and learning how to, to do my own work and how to hold myself first and how to tune into my desires and how to turn on my body and turn on my life, not for sexual player first per se, but just to live my life from that way, to follow my pleasure, to light up, to turn on. And, you know, if you're watching the video, uh, I hear all the time is I'm not being, you know, extra conceited here, but I hear all the time, like, well, what is this? Right. And, and that, that is turn on. That's living a life from your turn on the glow. Yeah. Yeah, I see the glow. I see the glow. So yes, I definitely do. I definitely do. Right. So is it a mental thing that can actually stimulate your body? Say that one more time. I, I didn't quite hear is that. Is it a mental thing that starts first wow. that actually can stimulate the senses in your body? For a lot of women, I, for myself, for one, I would have said when somebody asked me eight years ago, 10 years ago, what do you feel in your body? I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> So I would, would have said I was walking, talking head or walking, talking breasts up. Like that's all it was. Mm -hmm. So it's about coming back into our body. It's about moving. It's about feeling what mm. feels good to our skin, what feels good to our body. Are we ignoring our body? Are we nourishing our body? Um, mm. Where is our pleasure at? Are we inserting multiple pieces of pleasure into our day-to-day -day lives, even the things we don't want to do, right? There's so many aspects of inserting different things in of, you know, many women are like, no clue what they even want. If I say, what do you desire? Give me three things like genies right here. Let's go. And they're like, huh? Mm. <laughs> what do you desire? Because your desires are going to lead you down the path to your purpose, to creating that epic, amazing, juicy, fun life. But most mm. women get stuck going through the motions, stuck on the hamster wheel, caught in their head, people pleasing, wow. showing up from that place. Yeah. Mm. And that's a good point. Some sometimes, you know, they people pleasing is a is a big one when it comes to the sexuality, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. in a chorus and things like that. And it might not be only in the bedroom, right? Like I used to, I do say 
how you show up in the bedroom is how you're showing up in your life. So if you can't ask for what you want in the bedroom, I'm guaranteeing it that you're not asking for what you want from your boss, from your partner, from your kids, mm. from your family. Mm -hmm. Right? It's all yeah. connected. It's yeah, all connected. Mm. Right? So what advice could you give to someone that's, you know, trying to pull themselves out of that place, you know, of, of separating the two? Because, you know, first, obviously, it's a mental thing. And then we have to go through, you know, the healing portions and things like that. But like you said, you thought you were you were healed or you thought you got past it, but it still kept kept coming up. You know, what can what advice could you give to a woman where she's she's stuck? She's stuck and she's trying and it's just the surface that's getting hit. Yeah. If you're still saying, oh, I've already done that work, it's over with, <laughs> you still have work to do. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Because my trauma is never going to go away. This is the difference. Uh -huh. It's never going to go away. It is going to be activated when I am tired, when I am stressed out, when I'm sick, when I ha you know, haven't eaten, uh, haven't been watered, all of these things, right? When we're low, we're going to get activated. It doesn't go anywhere. It can't. It's what happens is we learn how to hold it and we learn how to regulate and we learn how to hold ourselves. So there's kind of four pillars that I also like to put in there. There's nervous system regulation is number one, right? As num we have to learn how to regulate our bodies and how to feel grounded, staying in our body, not in our head. We also have to bring in everyday pleasure, everyday sensual, fun pleasure, not the sexy pleasure yet, just the fun, sensual, regular, everyday pleasure. Yeah, okay. Right? And then we have to play with empowerment. Where are we losing our power? Where are we giving our power away? Where are we shrinking? Where are we playing small? Okay. And then we have to look at our sexy power, our sexuality, our play. Where are we embodied in being a, a an erotic being like we this is where we came from this is our power so we want to look at all of these pieces and work on whatever piece that is your next piece right sometimes there's a little bit of everything i kind of like to picture it like a, a spiral where you're you're always giving like little bits here and there and and it's just spiraling down and down and down and you're getting deeper and deeper into the core of who you are mm. i love that yeah definitely so um ahead, jenny <laughs> well, besides the the just the working through that, is there can you come to I'm not trying to put it, I'm trying to put it in words and how I'm and once you know, how can you really definitely know that you feel like you got your sexy back? Can you describe mm. that in a way where a woman when she gets to that point where she's like or on like the right path? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Well, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm going to start. I don't know where I'm going to start, but I, you know, I live my life following my desires. Right. I listen to my body, even when I disagree with her. Even when she's like, "You need to do this," and I'm like, "No, no, no," and she's like, "Yes, yes, yes." So I listen to my desires. I follow my pleasure. I live a turned on life. I run a turned on business. Um, I show up in my power. I'm not afraid to speak my truth. I'm not afraid to show up online on podcasts. Sometimes it's like 50 plus a year plus my own podcast. Uh, right now I have PR rep that I'm trying to get on TV. Like I'm not shrinking. I'm being who I am. Uh, I'm super embodied in my sexuality as well. I know how to ask for what I want in the bedroom. I'm able to tap in and access not only, you know, classic, I'm going to say classic because they're the what orgasms most people know of clitoral per se, but mm -hmm. I can tap into full body, energetic, womb, um, breast, third eye, you name it, right? Like we can tap into everything and we can use the tools to deepen. There's, there's a, there's a spirituality that happens in sacred sexuality where we're weaving in the spiritual with who we are. So there's all of these pieces moving and, and you know, you know, if you have your sexy back, like you just know, there's, there's always going to be a yearning for more if you don't. Mm -hmm. Right. And I had that for years. I had that in my twenties. If I'm honest, it was like, there has to be something more than this. This can't just be it. Right. Right. Mm. And there that. is, there is. That's good. That's real good. So you gave us some pillars. Can you explain, um, 
what do you love most about your job or what's your best mm -hmm. um, takeaway that you've had with client, different clients and, you know, speaking on, you know, self, self-confidence and building your sexy back. Like, what do you love most about your job? Especially when you didn't want to do it at first, because you're like, nah, I ain't. <laughs> but as you transitioned into your purpose, what do you love most yeah. about your job? I adore seeing people heal. I adore seeing women and men step into their power and speak their truth. Uh, I adore seeing them go after their dreams and desires and find their purpose and find why they're here. All of it. I, I, there's nothing I don't like about my job. That's also how you know you got your sexy back. You I <laughs> love my job. Okay, I don't like podcast editing, but I, you know, I have a great <laughs> podcast editor. I have other <laughs> things that I am better at, right? Um, but I love what I do. I love what I do. And it just, it, it warms my heart. And, and this, is, this is how we heal. Like we have not only our own trauma, trauma, but we have ancestral trauma. There's lineages and lineages of trauma. And it has to start somewhere. We have to start somewhere and do the work. Otherwise we're passing it on to our children. Mm, yes. And that's a whole nother topic that we have. It is. It is. Uh, and that's another way I know I totally have my sexy back, right? Like I have the most embodied, empowered, sexually empowered human teenager adults that we all, we all talk and it's open and, and yeah, yeah, it's really beautiful. How, do, how does your children, I mean, most of them, two of them, it seems like they're older, but how do they feel about their mom, you know, being a sex educator? You know, oh, yeah. can they talk to you about everything yeah. or a little like weird when the parents, you know, when you're like, you know, what do you do for a living? And then you got to explain. <laughs> <How> <laughs> yeah. for yeah. your my oldest is like, he's 20. My oldest is a boy, man, now 23. And he's like, oh, yeah, can you tell me about? And like, open conversation. Oh, yeah. He's getting out of He just wants to know. He wants to know because yeah. yeah. I think that he just wants to know because, you know, him being a man, you know, he wants to be able to satisfy his woman. So. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't even remember who I was talking to. It was a couple of years ago. We were in the backyard and I mentioned squirting to somebody. And he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I want to hear about that. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, and then uh, I have a little different. Oh, in my middle. that wasn't uncomfortable for you? I'm, I'm no, sorry. I, <laughs> I, go, I go all. It, it oh used to be. Goodness. It's not anymore. Um, hmm. my daughter, she's the youngest. I'll go there in a moment. Mm -hmm. My middle one, my 20 year old, um, man as well. Uh, he's like, don't talk to me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'll come around one day. And like, okay. I, I and like, totally okay. get it. I totally get that. And then my daughter, <laughs> my daughter is freaking amazing. She's the one who's almost 18. We talk about everything. She drives my car to school. It has get your sexy back as a license plate. She calls it the sexy mobile. She's like, and I'm that mom, like her boyfriend was in the pool two weeks ago. And I saw the burning man statue of the clitoris. And I went outside and I was showing them. I'm like, look at this. And it was really cool. If you haven't seen it, Google it. And he was like, what is that? And I was like, oh, okay. So that's a clitoris. Well, now you're about to have a whole class. Right? Oh, yeah. Right. He's standing in the pool. I'm like, you didn't think you're going to have that conversation with me, today, did you? But, you know, I know him quite well. And he spent a week with us at the cottage. So he learned me really quick by spending a whole week with me. <laughs> Uh, and, and he goes, are you telling me that, you know, we have audio right now, so I'll show you for the audio. Here is a little clitoris for the people who are watching live. This is the full size of a clitoris. Um, and he goes, are you telling me that like most of the men only know about the top 10% piece and there's like a whole pile left? And I'm like, yeah, I am. Right. So he was just blown away. So I am that mom. I am like, I have these open, honest conversations. They can ask me anything. Uh, I will talk about it and it doesn't make me uncomfortable at all, at all. Mm. I love the transparency that we have. Yes. Uh, I get asked questions by girlfriends of my kids, boyfriends of my kids. Um, they're not really kids anymore, but you get my point. But they, <laughs> we have these conversations and it's so freeing to be able to empower them in this way. Oh, and have uh, that it, it, space not, to get it from a professional, you know, get the advice yeah. from a professional. Mm -hmm. How old were they when you introduced, you know, the sex talk or talking to them about sex and yeah. and things like that? Because some people were like, oh, they're too young. And I'm like, no, it's it's never 
too early to, you know, bring that in so that they yeah. can be more familiar with the real terms and tools about, you know, sex and sexuality and confidence and boundaries and things like that. Such a good topic. And in the beginning, I couldn't do it, right? So my oldest is 23. However, Oprah had a sex therapist on that day. And she was talking, oh if you've seen this episode, I recorded it. She was talking to a little eight-year-old girl and talking to her about sex. It was grade three, I think, whatever. What, what is grade three? Eight, nine? Eight, seven, yeah. Yep. And she was talking to her on stage and I recorded it. And then I sat down, my oldest son, and like, here you go. Let's watch this. Because I was not who I am today. Right. Right. Um, so around that age, and then my daughter got it probably a little earlier. And definitely when I started my journey of healing and reclamation, she was around 10 okay. and, and we have been honest the entire way, way through the mm. entire way through. She would, you know, I'd be packing to go to New York and I'd have a bunch of different crystal dildos out. And she's like, what's this one for? <laughs> uh, and it was really fun. And then I lost her a little bit, like around 14, 13. She would ask me only a few questions once in a while. Mm -hmm. And she's now she's like, so, yeah. yeah. And now she's like, so this happened. Can we talk about it? I'm like, yeah, what do, what do you need? Right. So the easiest thing I found is to talk to kids as early as you can, because you are going to lose them in those 13, 14 year old years. Yeah. So if you can get them before that, and if you can create the safety and the comfortability and make them feel listened to, they might, you know, dwindle a little bit, but they're going to come back. Yeah. And another tip I would share is to talk about it when you're driving, when they're in the front seat beside you and they don't have to look at you. <laughs> It's much easier. Perfect They're looking timing. forward. You're looking forward. <laughs> yeah, but don't wait. Don't yeah. wait. I know people who don't even talk to their kids until they're 18. And oh my gosh, yeah, that's so, right. that's disempowering. Yes, it is. I wish I knew when I was young. I wish, you know, my parents or someone sat down with me to give me the sex talk at a young age. I had to learn yeah. on my own. Yeah. yeah. And not just the sex talk, the pleasure talk. Yeah, like yes. raising boys, mm -hmm. it's important. Like, joy and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, women women take a minimum of twenty minutes to turn on. You have to talk. You have to communicate. You have to open the lines of communication and intimacy, and, and see what they like. And it might change every five minutes, but we have to talk about these things. Yes, that's good. The intimacy mm -hmm. portion, because when my son got into high school, I made a whole slideshow. I was that mom, and he's like, "Mom, you really put a lot of thought in that." <laughs> And I, I love that. I did really good, yeah. didn't I? He was like, we already had this talk, you know. And then <laughs> now and it's just like, oh boy, it's at that stage again. And I'm like, we have to go get, you know, it, stuff. And he's like, yeah. I'm not having this conversation with uh, you. For me, that's it was a good awkward. point. Yeah. For me, it was awkward because uh, my son was going into middle school, and you know, like some of the schools now, they do like those sex ed classes now. Mm -hmm. And he comes home with like this little pamphlet and he's like, mom, you know, and I was trying to be like the hot and the cold, you know, do you get hot, you know? And it was so awkward because I can like, and, and we talk about it all the time. He was like, mom, I remember when you were trying to tell me like what was hot and what was cold. And I was like, uh, I think you need to talk to your dad about this. So it was, like, it was kind of hard, you know, at the time, you know, being, that I was a single mom, you know, being able to have that conversation with him. And now he's just like, he's 22 and, you know, he, he speaks freely about it now, which is great because I have also that transparency with him. But sometimes I'd be like, uh, and sometimes I remind myself, I'm your mom, not your friend, but Ooh. we have, we, it, it's important to have those conversations. It is. And you may have to start with your own work first, right? If you can't have those conversations, you might need to have to start with your own work first. And it's not one conversation. Right. It has to be an ongoing conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, like my daughter and I probably a few times a week. Like it's, yeah. Oh, you have that many wow. conversations about it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if this is making you squeamish. We want to talk. <laughs> I'm thinking like once a week, maybe once a month, you know, hey, check in, check out, you know. Not, <laughs> oh, that's a lot. Do you feel the energy <laughs> in that there? The energy is like, yeah. I want to talk to you, but I really don't want to. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> right? It's very that's different. That's definitely me. <laughs> right? That, that's because it's uncomfortable in us. It's because of the shame. It's because of what we've been taught of, of mm -hmm. you know, how our society views our bodies and sexuality. And, and there's, there's work to play with there. Yeah. So I invite mm -hmm. you in. 
and then also, you know, it wasn't conversations that I had with my parents, you know, we, no. we yeah. talk about mm -hmm. nothing. They're just like, don't get pregnant. <laughs> like, yep. You know, just yep. basic, exactly. Don't get pregnant. Everything. Finish school, you mm -hmm. know, and it's like, mm -hmm. so now it's like, yes, it's a little uncomfortable, but I'm, I'm yeah. glad that we are able to have, you know, some type of conversations, but I didn't know we were supposed to have it that often. As often as you can, right? <laughs> as, as often as you can. And it, it's just so important. It's so important that we're open that way. And and we are rewriting new stories here, right? Like, as you said, right. your parents didn't talk to you like this. Most of our parents these days, um, 30 and up or 35 and up, like our parents, even 30, 25 sometimes, our parents have not talked to us about this. This is a new patterning. It's going to feel uncomfortable in the beginning. It's just going to. You can't mm -hmm. take a deep dive into sexuality and not feel uncomfortable. It's meant to bring shit up. It's going mm -hmm. to. It's just going to. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. So share your business and, you know, how you help others and how they can get more of your good scoop. And we mm -hmm. got to have a, a, a part two to get into the deep stuff. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah. So business, my business is Get Your Sexy Back. It's getyoursexyback.ca for Canada. If you can remember that, you'll be good. Um, and my podcast is Get Your Sexy Back. Like I'm really consistent here. My private Facebook group is Get Your Sexy Back for female identifying humans. I do work with women and men and couples and non-binary okay. humans, but a lot of my client work is with women. Uh, and at the moment, I, perfect timing, of course, because I literally just opened a brand new program yesterday called oh, Get, nice. Get, yeah, called Get Your Sexy Back program specifically, which I've never named a program before. Um, and that is where we get to step into a world where pleasure is your birthright, where boundaries are your fortress and where sensuality is your superpower. So mm -hmm. we're going to be working on unleashing your inner radiance and reclaiming your desires and awakening your sensual fire. It's really in time. It's really time to ignite that inner fire, that inner goddess that lives within each of you. And I say goddess because this program is for female identifying humans only. It's an eight week journey and it's going to be so much fun. And everybody who's listening, right now is so lucky because early bird's still on early bird just opened it's like regular 444 for the eight-week program and it's on for 222 until september 30th uh-huh i was like i want as many humans in this program as possible it is going to be so good and i'm i'm so excited to play and to take people through this journey to reconnect to reclaim and remember yes i love it and they can actually find all that on get your sexy back that ca Yep. Get your sexy back .ca. It's under coaching. It's the very first one. It says get your sexy back program and uh, yeah, get in there and uh, it's going to be really fun. Really, really fun. Yes. Mm. Yes. That is so good. Thank you so much, uh, Kim, for your, your information. Um, it's been, <laughs> I'm like, like, you have me like, <laughs> See? you're feeling some of the turn on, aren't you? There we go. So, um, Shanara, do we have any open questions? Do we have any questions from the audience? No, just some uh, comments. Hey, Ten of Life, thanks for tuning in. Nope, no, no comments. I'm sure we'll probably get comments later on on the replay. <laughs> Thank you again, um, Kim, for your testimony and just everything what you're doing now. Um, and thank you for our audience for tuning in this evening. Um, we have a question. I have a we have a question. We ask all our guest speakers: What makes you uncommon? Mm. It's tricky and, and cute all at once. It's, it's uncommon <laughs> and yet it's available to all of you, which would be <laughs> literally learning how to come into your body and how to trust the innate inner wisdom within. And it makes me uncommon because not everybody's doing it yet, but it is totally possible for you and to break through those barriers and to create the life that you love and desire. Mm, I love that. I love that. Mm. And it is available. It's available to everyone. Mm. I love that. Thank you again. Um, as since we're all closing out, um, make sure if you are a business that is to, uh, we're, if you're looking somewhere to grow your business, we Uncommon Men have a business promo, promo coming on that we're all working towards to help you grow your business. So if you want to, um, our information, email us at Uncommon Women Podcast at, at gmail.com, as well as that we are having our third annual I Love Myself seminar coming November 18th. 
So make sure you get your tickets. So if you want to be a part of the platform um, and the event where we're going to have powerful testimonies and speaking on self-love and so much more, um, you can get your tickets at Uncommon Women at uncommonwomenlimitbright.com or you can search um, on the browser or Google or anywhere uh, on the um, on the internet where you can find I Love Myself uh, seminar as well at Eventbrite. And make sure you tune in next week for another powerful testimony and make sure you stay uncommon. Bye. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you've been shacking up with us for a while and haven't subscribed to our channel, what are you waiting for? Please like and subscribe to Uncommon Woman so you won't miss another episode. And remember, don't let anything or anyone affect your peace. Good vibes and stay uncommon.